My name is Laura Jesse Isles and I work at the Plant and Insect Diagnostic Clinic at Iowa State University and today we're going to talk about the social wasps in Iowa. In Iowa we have three major types of social wasps. We have the paper wasps. Um, they build those kind of umbrella type nests where you can see all the little combs very often under eaves of houses, you know, sometimes inside mailboxes and those sorts of places. The second type of wasps that we have are the bald-faced hornets. They build those beautiful round nests that hang in trees very commonly. And then the third type that we have are the yellow jackets. Um, the yellow jackets are one that they nest in cavities, often old rodent holes and things like that. So they're the ones that you sometimes see going in and out of holes um, in the ground. So those are the three major types of social wasps that we have in Iowa. Now let's take a closer look at the paper wasps. So the paper wasps are, they're social, they have a colony, the queen and the workers don't really look very different, but that queen, she starts out that colony each year all by herself. She starts making the little cells of the nest, laying eggs in it for all the workers. So, you know, by this time of the year in like late summer or so, you'll, you can have, you know, 20 or 30 workers involved with the nest. Um, usually they don't get much larger, although up to 100 workers is possible. So you'll have those combs, the female queen will lay the egg and then they forage for particularly caterpillars to feed the young. So caterpillars are a good source of protein. So they're actually a very good, you know, biological control agent in your yard because they're going out and collecting, you know, very often pest caterpillars and they're feeding those to the larva. So the larva is in the cell, it's being fed by the workers. Eventually it goes to pupate, they cap off that cell and then once it's pupated, an adult will emerge and then join the colony in order to take care of the, the new wasps. So late in the year, late fall, it becomes time for this colony to basically reproduce. They don't reuse this nest at all. They will produce queens and kings, so males and females, that, and those queens will mate with those males and then overwinter in, you know, not near the colony at all, they'll overwinter in the soil or in leaf litter or anywhere kind of sheltered. And then in the spring, they will start a new colony themselves. So paper wasps are not a very aggressive wasp. For the most part, you can just leave them alone. In this case, we're standing in the front of someone's house and the colony is fairly low down and in a place where someone, you know, potentially watering plants and things like that could brush against it. If a colony is located somewhere where you're concerned about someone coming in contact with it, you can control it. Um, you can purchase you know, wasp and hornet sprays from the store and spray the, spray the whole colony with it. Um, I recommend doing this late at night or first thing in the morning when it's cold and the wasps are inactive on the nest. Um, if you are allergic to wasps, I don't recommend you do this at all. Have someone else do it if you are allergic. Um, some other precautions you can take are to, you know, tuck, you know, make sure you don't have loose sleeves, to tuck your pant legs into your socks because the way you can really get a lot of stings is if a wasp gets up under loose clothing and then can sting you multiple times. Here in this colony, we have a species of paper wasp that's native to the Midwest um, and to the U.S. So this is uh, the northern paper wasp. Um, this species does not tend to have very large colonies. They are not very aggressive. Um, we can get very close and, and look at them and enjoy them because they aren't likely to sting us. Yeah, even though we're very close here to this colony, and you can see my hand here, they're not, they're not terribly concerned about me. It's a little cool this morning, so we're kind of in the 65 to 70 degree range, so this temperature wasps are pretty calm. I probably would not be doing this if it were a little bit warmer because they might be more active. But again, I've watched this colony all summer long and gotten very close, taken a lot of pictures, and they have been very calm about it, so not very aggressive. Some of the wasps they'll usually see like out like nearby or on nearby plants, um, kind of watching out. And I think they're probably kind of watching for any threats to the colony. Some will be will leave and they'll go collect bits of wood. All this comb stuff you see is basically paper. That's where they get their name. So I've seen them a lot on my I have, my back porch isn't varnished, and so they they come and they 
you see them, they'll chew on the wood. I'm sure you probably, most of you have probably seen that. The wasps just kind of on the wood, they take off a little bit, they chew it up and with their saliva and glue it together into these cool looking nests. So now we're going to leave this residential area where we're looking at one of our native species of paper wasps and go to where we can um, visit with one of our invasive species of paper wasps, the European paper wasp, which is a little different than these guys. So it'll be nice to be able to compare the two different colonies. So another common species of paper wasp in Iowa is actually a newer species. It's invasive. They're called the European paper wasp. They've been around in Iowa pretty commonly for about the past five years. We're a little bit more concerned about the European paper wasp because they have the capability to build much bigger colonies. We'll start to see colonies, you know, more than 50 to 100 individual range. And so you've got more, more wasps, more risk of being stung. They also tend to build their colonies in cavities more. So sometimes in barbecue grills, in mailboxes, um, in places where people might accidentally encounter them. So we're gonna take a look at this European paper wasp. You can really see the difference in the colony size between that northern paper wasp, our native one, and this invasive species. So the paper wasp adults that we see crawling around all over the nest, those feed primarily on like honeydew from aphids, um, nectar from flowers, things like that. So they're kind of sweet um, feeders, sometimes rotten fruit and things like that. But the larvae, the young ones, they need more protein in their diet. And so they're fed um, other insects, particularly caterpillars. So what the adult wasp does, it flies around, it finds a caterpillar, um, and it basically just chews up the caterpillar like a hamburger and brings back a small ball of it and feeds it to the larva. So if it's a large caterpillar, it will go back and forth multiple times, chewing up a ball of it each time and bringing it back. A smaller caterpillar might be able to do it in one trip. So that's how they feed their young. And then as adults, they're just eating that pollen and nectar. Many people are allergic to wasps and have very serious reactions to stings. So you definitely don't want to approach wasps or try to, try to control wasps if you have ever had any sort of allergic reaction to them. And then for the most part, just stay away from them. If they're kind of buzzing around your head and things, um, best to just you know hold your arms down or just cover your face and walk away. The more you wave your arms around and things like that, the more you'll agitate them risk the, getting them caught in your sleeves or things like that and greater risk of being stung. It's kind of amazing just one female queen started that colony earlier this spring and she built the first cell and laid her eggs and fed them and then as soon as she had her daughters to help out they do most of the feeding and gathering of food and building of the cells and she focuses on egg laying. They only need boys at the end of the year, so they'll produce males in the fall to mate with the queens. And then so the queens are mated and they overwinter. So they'll just produce males at one time. The two different kinds of paper wasps are pretty closely related. They're in the same genera, but they're actually two different species. So our native paper wasps that we just looked at um, had more kind of brown coloration, um, kind of orangish on antenna and legs and things like that. The dots on it are kind of orangish brown. Um, but the European paper wasp has more bright coloration. They're kind of bright black and yellow. The antenna are fairly bright orangish yellow. So that's the best way to tell them apart is the coloration. The nests that they build are very similar. So wasps are really fun to observe. Um, you need to be careful around them, but it's, it's fun to observe them. Although, you know, if this is around your house or somewhere and you're concerned about being stung, um, controlling them is definitely an option. You can always get in touch with me if you have any questions about control, but if they're somewhere that you can keep children and pets and things away from them, um, you can just leave them be and enjoy them on occasion.